All right, guys. So somebody had asked me if I can explain a little bit better what that manual in the Pocket 4K is about as far as the ISO dynamic range. Now, I'm going to be doing a lot more tests than this, but somebody wants me to do a quick explanation before they do the firmware update because you'll never know how a new firmware will affect the image. This scene isn't really high dynamic range because there's not a lot of clouds. The sky is pretty much you know, it's okay, there's not a lot of variations to it. So the actual brightest part of this image is right here on the right, and I made sure to get that in the shot, this white window area here. I'm gonna control W, and you can see that as well. So technically, it's not really a high dynamic range scene. So we're gonna pull up the, uh, the manual. So here is the manual, and we're gonna look at three different ISOs. We're gonna look at the 100 ISO, we're gonna look at the 400 ISO, which is the native ISO. And we're also gonna look at the 800 ISO, okay? So in a 100 ISO range, it says that there's 9.6 stops below middle and 3.5 above. And in the 400, it has 7.6, 5.5 above. And then you have your 800, 6.5 to 6.6. All right, so just a disclaimer, I don't work for Blackmagic. I'm not a scientist, I'm just a YouTuber, and this is really speculation and common sense I'm using here, and I could be totally wrong. So from my understanding is, if you don't have a lot of high dynamic range scenes, if you're not shooting a high dynamic range scenes, meaning there's not a lot of stops above middle gray, that you should use a lower ISO, right? But if you want to shoot a scene that you're not really sure about on how much stops you have in the bottom and top, then you will use the native ISO 5.5 in the top and 7.6. Or if you want to get really, really even, you can shoot at 6.5 to 6.6 .6 in between. But just so you know, the higher ISO you go, the more noise you're going to get. So let's go back to my scene. So we're going to go to edit because I actually label these so we don't forget. So the first shot is 800 at F11, second shot is 400 at F8, and then the last one is 100 at F4. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the ISO of 100 at F4. So according to my common sense, if I want more details in the lower end of the middle gray or your image, I would shoot in a lower ISO according to the chart, correct? So look at a 100, we get 9.6 stops below middle gray, 3.5 above. Now, like I said earlier, I wouldn't really consider this a high dynamic range on the highlights, meaning I really wouldn't need that much stops on the top end of my image. So this is the 100, right? So I shot this at 100, and you can see here, 100 ISO, pocket 4K film, and this is the film look. It has nothing in it. Let me go ahead and turn off that label because that throws off the color here and the information. So this is the 100, this is the 400, and this is the 800. So as you can see, the higher ISO we go, the more detail in the highlights we get. If you watch the top end of this waveform, you're gonna see it. So this is 800, 400, and then clip at 100. You see this clipped? That means because according to the chart, you know, we only have 3.5 above stops at 100. So that makes sense, right? And that's what it's talking about. So that's what it's telling you. That if you shoot at lower ISO, you're gonna lose a lot of range on the top end, as you can see here. There's 100, 400, and then 800. But we also have highlight recovery. So what happens when we click highlight recovery? We actually get detail back, which is crazy. Now, I don't know if that's, that includes the 3.5 right there, or is it 3.5 like this? I don't know, but it seems like I'm getting more detail by just clicking the highlight recovery. If we go to the 400, I'm gonna click highlight recovery. There's nothing there. It's because there's nothing there because it didn't clip anything. Similarly to the 800, nothing there because everything is in range, right? And we're gonna convert these to extended video, right? And you're gonna see this even better. 
here we go 800 everything is in range highlights look fantastic but you can see here in the bottom the shadowy part you can see this is the darkest part that's this door right here that's getting a little bit muddier and noisier we go to 400 which is the native iso let's look at that in the chart 400 iso we get 7.6 and 5.5 that should look better than an 800 and it does you can see the milkiness kind of goes away like that you can see that there's more detail there and that's what you want right there and we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and focus that real quick all right so this is the 400 this is the 800 really noisy that thing is getting noisier because it's compensating for the highlights and that's why this chart is so helpful because you can pretty much set an ISO for your scene. You just don't pick one ISO. Obviously, if you think everything is okay, you don't care, really care about it, just set it to 400, you're good to go. But if you wanna maximize your ISO and your image and not have your expensive camera like the Red Helium look like the Tomato Jet guy made it look like a cell phone, you would pay attention to these ISOs. But like I said, I'm not a professional. This is common sense. This is, I'm looking at it, I'm showing it to you so you can see what I'm seeing. And looking at this, the 800 ISO is noisier than the 400, which makes sense because it's higher and it has less uh, detail in the shadows, which reflects the chart, right? Now let's go from 400 to 100. Now, from 400 to 100, we should get a lot more detail in the below of middle gray. We should get 9.6, right, stops below the middle gray. Let's see if that that's really what's happening here. Boom. Sure enough, look at that detail. Look at that crazy detail in the shadow area. Look at this. A little bit of noise there. You click on that and boom, that thing is sharp. I didn't touch the focus at all, just changed ISO when shooting. And you can see the detail on that. I mean, look at the difference between that two. Look at that, this is 800, 400, and then we're gonna look at the 100. All right, so that's the shadow part, right? So to me, oh, let's go ahead and untick highlight recovery real quick so you kind of see what's happening here. You kind of see that that's clipped. So what you're actually doing is you're saying, hey, camera, I actually care more about the shadowy part of my image instead of my highlights. That's really what you're saying. Look at the detail in the shadows with that, but you do lose a little bit on the top end on the highlights compared to the other ones, as you can see here. But I think in my opinion, with highlight recovery turned on, that ISO 100, it looks pretty darn good now i like i said i am gonna be doing a lot more of this because this is very interesting because before we've kind of we've kind of just thought about it like yes yeah, set it at iso 400 everything will be fine but now black magic with the pocket 4k and this dual native iso they're giving us more flexibility trying to get the most absolute best image out of the camera yo i really hope joan that this answer your question. I hope this helped you a little bit for now. I am gonna be doing some more stuff later on this weekend with skin tones and stuff. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know and I'll see you guys later.